Hi, Amanda Armstrong. Welcome to the back of this Teardown Lab. Look, we have one of these DVB receivers for your computer. How exciting. Now, I remember buying my first computer DVB. Let's zoom back out. It's a big old box. DVB receiver a long time ago. Wow, but it never came with a remote control, so that's pretty groovy. Infrared. Um, and uh, yeah, it used to just get really hot. Um, and it kind of worked, but it was kind of rubbish. So. I don't recall really persevering much. In fact, I do recall the eBay sender accidentally sent me two because they were so useless and took so long, I actually complained and said, where the hell's it been? Because it's sort of several months have elapsed. Um, and then two turned up all uh, sort of one go. So I have no idea how their sort of stock control system worked. Suffice to say, I didn't bother posting it back to China. Catalogo de productos. So yeah, here we go. It's got Windows Vista drivers, Windows 7 drivers. Tune your favorite FM and radio channels, HDTV support, electronic program guides, instant schedule recording, multiple channel preview, watch and record digital terrestrial TV, multi-language. It really is absolutely everything you could want out of something cheap you've bought from China. Now, uh, there's the digital software. Digital software, what the hell am I talking about? There's the CD software, which is clearly going to be digital. Um, and I've got no CD players on most things now, so that's going to be interesting. I have to get drivers off when I, if, I, if and when I actually bother trying to run it. But I thought we'll have a look inside. I think that's really where we want to go with this. And that's cute, though. Look at that. I mean, that's, that's a nice antenna port. It's a standard antenna port straight in the end. And I have to admit, this whole thing is far better quality than I remember them being. And the remote control's pretty good. Yeah, uh, NPG, hmm. not sure what brand that is, but yeah, it's actually a nice quality. I can't really say, uh, comment on the function at the moment. The uh, USB extender's looking a bit white. You know, like how the old, when chocolate goes a bit uh, dusty? It's sort of gone a bit dusty, but I won't worry about that. That'll probably still work fine. Antenna, I'm guessing, is a magnetic one. Yes, it is. I've stuck it on a thing, and it's clearly a magnetic one. The magnet actually forms part of the uh, ground plane, so the thing that you hit, hook it on is part of the antenna, so you will need to actually put that on something metal to make it work properly. Just seeing how we can get into this bad boy. Luckily, I haven't cut my fingernails for a little while, so uh, just working them down the edge. Working them, working them, working them. Failing, failing miserable. Let's open my drawer. You can hear it rattling away. Gonna sort of try to get in there. I mean, this is so slim now, it could be quite a lot of fun. Yeah, that isn't too bad. If, for example, I could get this to work with a Raspberry Pi or, or something like that, then I could convert one of my sort of various monitor builds into something else so it could actually have TV functionality. I mean, that, that could be useful. Um, and also, it's so slim that you could probably build it into something. So I mean, just you could desolder the whole. Uh, hang on, just fighting this for a moment. You could just desolder the USB and the antenna ports off, and just mount this board really inside a sort of case of something like your laptop. Again, I digress. So this is it. Antenna is really nicely fit. I think I've never seen that before. I'm going to zoom in as maximum level as I can so you can have a nice look too. It's uh, basically the cylinder of an antenna and they've sort of cut away a hole in the PCB to allow it to sort of pop in there. And that's just what they've done. They've just popped it straight in. That works really well and just sold straight to the enclosure. There's the infrared receiver. Now I'm trying to look at the chips and using my uh, my eyes. And where have I? You know, I've tidied my whole office um, to make sure I don't lose my tools. And first thing I lose is my number one tool. Here is a, an RTL chip. I'm going to put a bit of saliva on it. Excuse me to see if I can just read the. No, that's a hard one to read. Nope. Can it? Can it read it at all? I mean, RTL two. 28320 perhaps 28320 maybe 
you do see them on a lot of sort of TV things, so it's probably a standard chip. God, this is hard to read. Looks like a custom chip. All I can make out on this one is ah, it's this way round. Woohoo! Hard to read, guys. Something ending in five one two. Really difficult. Crystal on there. Twenty eight megahertz. Chip on the back. Hmm. This one looks FM two four C zero two. Sort of maybe to do with the power adapter. So it's sorry, it's it's just almost a, a mystery. Um, whoa! In this light, I can read the chips. Crazy. This one here, FC zero zero one two. They've suddenly they've suddenly become visible to me. Sorry, guys. Uh, the top one is an RTL two eight three two U. So RTL two eight three two U. Bottom one FC zero zero one two. Whew. Thank you for bearing with me. That was a bit of a pain. Um, yeah, remote control looks like the standard flat ones with the uh, lithium cell in the base. Neat if that works. And if it does work, it'd be also neat if that allowed you to do some other things with the OS itself. But normally these are locked to the sort of crappy software that these things rely on. So I'm going to try uh, this out probably in the next few weeks into a device. Maybe I've got an old Windows Vista laptop lying around. We'll see if it works. If you don't hear from me on this subject, I've tried it and it's failed and I've just, you know, thrown it away. Hi, welcome back. Apologies if I sound somewhat different. I'm on a different camera, but I just had to show you this. I've attached the antenna here whoop, and just plugged the device straight into my PC. You know, I didn't do anything with drivers or whatever, just updated the sort of drivers from device manager and it detected an infrared port. Then I went onto the internet and I just found this. I just typed in free PVR and this sick bowl, <laughs> this sitch bowl PVR. And there's the URL, sichbopvr.com. And I downloaded it for Windows 10. I really didn't do anything. And um, I just sort of ran it, told it where I was, which is in Oxfordshire. And you could see here, look, 27 new frequencies. And I'm just going to hit scan now. Let's see if it actually works. And I'll be just absolutely amazed. It detected the device as something called um, a Realtek DVR filter or DTV filter. In fact, yes, that's what it says right there, DTV filter. Um, and uh, if it just works, I'm going to be absolutely blown away. There you have it. A little bit of Simpsons action going on. Let's see if I'll just turn the volume down. EPGs all working. Look here on the left. All of the TV channels in the UK, ITV, ITV2, look, all there, nice logos. Um, if you've got signal, you can see the actual picture changes quite quickly. Um, it works reasonably well. I have had to adjust my antenna setup. You can see the wire there going to a different antenna so I could sort of angle it correctly, but that's fine. That's something we can tune later. For a free piece of software, though, this is absolutely um, bonkersly good. I mean, I just can't believe... Uh, this shit, sick bowl, shit bowl PVR is as good as it is. Please feel free to comment down below on your experiences with such dongles. Do you actually use one in anger and does it still work? That's uh, an important one. Please click like and subscribe if you're that way inclined. And as ever, thank you for watching.